This is going to be chaos. Good luck, everyone. There's Chaos 2 immediately on the attack. Dominator 2 in there as well with a big action. Dominator 2 flicked up on his side by suicidal tendencies. Suicidal tendencies nearly went over at the same time. Let's have a look at it again. Chaos 2 in the midst of it all. Up went Dominator 2 and over. Suicidal tendencies very nearly flicked up. But don't forget, it can work both sides up the track. Suicidal tendencies. There's Killerts with its axe as well. You can see Bash retreating into its CPZ and why not? Stinger with the axe in there as well. Chaos 2 with the CO2 powered battering ramp. Dominator 2's okay. Whoa, there's the reigning champions, Chaos 2, slamming in on suicidal tendencies. Killer Hertz is in there as well. Here comes Dominator 2, bottom of your picture. Now it seems to me that uh, Spikosaurus is in a little bit of trouble, but okay now. Goodness me, look at that. There's Spikosaurus in there. You've got Chaos 2 as well. Dominator 2, the bottom of your picture, Stinger doing its own thing as it's wont to do. That Spikosaurus in major trouble. Seems to me that Kilohertz is holding on. Tendencies comes in. Stinger now under threat from Chaos 2. Turning away. And uh, Spikosaurus has been impaled by the axe of Kilohertz. Kilohertz 2! Flicked over by Dominator 2. Axe to axe. Metal to metal. Bash and crash. Stinger in with a slam on Chaos 2. Chaos 2 in underneath Kilohertz again. They think Kilohertz is the vulnerable machine. Chaos 2 against the arena wall and is impaled, is it? Can George Francis get that flipper off? Well, Dominator 2, a little nudge helped out. The object, boys, is to destroy each other. I wonder if Dominator 2 will rue that little bit of friendship. Look at the crashing of the axes. The flipper there. You've got uh, suicidal tendencies trundling. And Killerts trying to flip, trying to turn itself over with that pneumatically powered axe. But Killerts in major trouble. Chaos 2 comes in with a slam. And bam! And Killerts 2, I think, is going to be first to go in the Annihilator. Each round, one crashes out. Piggyback up on Chaos 2. Was it immobilized for 30 seconds or more? If it goes to the judges, the rest of them just staying out of trouble. Bash comes in for a look. There's Dominator 2 with the pickaxe. This Stinger. <laughs> Stinger loves a little bit of a rumble and a tussle. Sometimes I don't know what the Stinger boys are doing. I don't think they know what they're doing either. Uh, Dominator 2 out there. Chaos 2 as well. Killer Hurts. Well, back in the thick of the action. And we still have all six competing. Chaos 2 takes punishment right through the front flipper there from Dominator 2. The wheels of the Dominator spin, but Chaos 2 is in all sorts of problems now. Top of the picture, Spikosaurus and Suicidal Tendency. In comes Dominator again. And suddenly it's the Chaos top seeds, the reigning UK champions, who are up against it. Now we've got a push and shove. At top of the picture, they've dominated two and Spikosaurus. Killer Hurts, I thought they were out, but they're back in really in the thick of things. So are Chaos 2 now. You've got the house robots into play in that CPZ. Look at this, a real tug of war here. And still they battle on bravely. Not one machine will give up, but Chaos 2 has taken unprecedented damage. The machinery, the very heart of Chaos, is vulnerable to attack. Dominator 2 lifts that Perspex lid up like some grisly scalp trophy. Chaos 2, they're all after the reigning UK champions, it seems. They're ganging up. Get rid of the strongest machine. Get rid of the favourite. We'll gang up. And we'll see who goes through. Dominator 2 in space. About to come in for an attack of Chaos 2. George Francis, I don't think he knows what's hit him. You've now got Shunt in there to create more damage. Stinger, the axe comes battering down on Shunt, but it's Chaos 2. All of a sudden, the likely machine to go out of the first stage of the Great Annihilator, the northern section. In goes Spikosaurus to try and push suicidal tendencies out of the melee, out of the mayhem. Chaos 2 is their movement, is their life. Goodness me, I don't think there was. As I said, quicker than Wild Thing. Flipping Wild Thing. In underneath. Wild Thing technically with a zero ground clearance. That doesn't really matter again. Our poor old pit release tires come off the arena sidewall. Chaos 2's flipped over. Can't right and 
scores using that hugely powerful CO2 front flipper at the stream. Wild thing topple once again. This is furious, fast, frenetic action in the robot wars. Semi final arena. They turn, they twist, they maneuver. The buzzer sounds. That means the pit is descending quickly. They have to avoid it here towards Francis and the controls of Chaos 2. Dancing the dance with wild things. Nick Adams, down to Isabel and Jake Adams who grown up around the Robot Wars Arena. Wild Thing under pressure. Semi-finalist in Series 3, beat by Planet Attack. Semi-finalist in Series 4, beat by Hypnotist. Semi-finalist in Series 5, will they be beat by Chaos 2? Oh, almost turning table. But Nick Adams can bring Wild Thing back onto the attack. They slam, they crash. Sparks fly. It's brilliant control. Wild Thing buried in the air. Chaos 2 in the pit. Look at that right on the left. And George Francis dug in. And the motors burn. Push back, just surviving George Francis. In comes Dead Metal, in comes Shunt. Slamming down there onto the top of Wild Thing, almost lost underneath the house robots. Chaos 2 with the flipper wedged in underneath. Wild Thing, moments ago on the verge of victory, now fighting for survival perhaps. Chaos 2 once again bumping and barging. Wild Thing is tossed, will self right, levering itself up on that arm. Tries to get the 6,000 RPM spinning disc into action. They are still here, courageously fighting back in chaos to again. Toppled onto its side. How did they stay out? How on earth did they survive another onslaught? Look at this. Surely they must go into the pit of oblivion. And George Francis breathes again and lives another Robot Wars life. The clock is ticking down on one of the most bruising and thrilling Robot Wars battles I can ever remember. Fantastic! Completing our gruesome twosome is the Kilowatt. two, one. This for the UK title, Champions of the Seventh Wars. Typhoon 2 allowed to get up to spinning speed and bouncing away. Deflected away off Storm 2's front scoop. Or maybe the side skirt. Now that's interesting. Certainly withstanding the first bash from Typhoon 2. Only a deflecting blow, nothing more. They look pensive. This is going to be the hardest battle they faced, the boys from the Edinburgh Air Cadets. Storm 2 giving chase. Surely they can't expect to get in underneath Typhoon 2's ground clearance. It's half a centimetre, but they're moving too quickly, I would have thought. Again, deflecting away. Piggy backing up on top of Storm 2, and Storm 2 lifting Typhoon 2. Very close to the arena wall. They're right in front of Jane over there. If it does go over, it's all over. The Typhoon Ooh, lives to fight another moment or two. This is close stuff. Now, they're vulnerable when they're not up to full gyroscopic speed. And at the moment, it's like pinball out there. And again, Storm 2 giving chase, and Typhoon 2 is really up against it. Storm 2. With the pushing power of a tornado and the clever use of the flipper of a, of a firestorm, is really on top here now. Typhoon! Oh, slams another great chunk out of the arena! Smash the arena! Smash the arena! Seat is called! The two grand finalists are back in the water. Tears, stand Typhoon by. 2 and Storm 2. And the judges once again allowing the Typhoon 2 team to spin up the speed they were at before the cease was called. Three, two, one, activate. Storm 2 on top before the cease, according to the judges. And again, pursuing Typhoon 2. Typhoon 2 take off, bounces down again. Matilda very close. Storm 2 pushing them into that CPZ and trying to lever them out of the arena. Storm 2 notching up points by the second here. I think the way they reached this grand final would have had them as favourites. Oh, and just then, angling away off the pit. Off a little chink, maybe, on the arena floor, but they're very close to the pit this side. The 
pit has opened. Typhoon 2, was that a turning point in the finals? They just moved away at a curious angle from the pit. Storm 2's chase has slowed. Very curiously, I think that was a turning point as they literally turned right. And Typhoon 2, under pressure again from Storm 2. But is it just me or is there as much menace about the Storm 2 push now? Perhaps there is. They've got Typhoon 2 into the CP7. Here comes Matilda. And certainly the grand final favourites are up against it here. Storm 2, closing again. Typhoon 2 can't get up to spinning speed. Very, very level still, though, and only seconds remain. Storm 2 away. Oh, what's happened to Storm 2? They've taken some damage on the front. Where on earth did that happen? That is major damage. Major damage to Storm 2. As the grand final turned again. What a twister this was. The judges will have to decide it. Look at the damage later on. Robot Wars Grand Final gets underway. Hit notice. Gains momentum. I'll tell you what, Bigger Brother withstood that attack very nicely, thank you. A very nearly got in underneath him, notice. Hit notice with a 20 millimeter ground clearance that could be vulnerable to that lifting device that gives Bigger Brother so much more potency in this series. Will the gas last out and how much damage can they take from Hypnodisc? I think there's a gash in the side of Bigger Brother. There it is, on the left-hand side. We just got a glimpse of it. And the Rose family in Hypnodisc immediately on top there. And they come in with another onslaught. You have to be so strong to withstand this spinning devilish Hypnodisc weapon. And I don't think Bigger Brother are and something flew off there. It's crumpled, it's ruffled, Bigger Brother. And Ian Watts and little Joe eight and a half and little Elihu six have done brilliantly to get this far. They've enjoyed it and we've enjoyed having them in the Robot War series once again. Oh, Bigger Brother. Oh, tattered and torn. I don't like the watch. And crumpled and well-worn by now. And Hypnodisc relentless in its pursuit of its quarry. And I'm afraid... That bigger brother flipper is not going to work here because Dave Rose is too quick. Oh, even the Lely car watch. Can we? Do we want to see more damage inflicted to bigger brother? Yes, we do. Hypnosis with the blade spinning away. Looks like here battling its way through in worthy style. Bigger brother, was it drag? Was it pushing? Through TikTok out, through Splinter out, didn't quite throw three stegs out. Beat S3, beat Chaos 2, and the run ends here. Or does it, Ellie? Come on, watch again, because in the disc is in the corner, in the CPZ. And we'll need to get out, and something flew out of Bigger Brother there. Some sort of mesh, I think it was. Will Ellie be looking now? Hit no disc. Seem to be a bit more wary. And I'll tell you what, despite all the damage, Bigger Brother are still fighting on. I wouldn't have minded a Bigger Brother like this. And they've got enough confidence to go for the pit release button, have they? Are they going to nudge Hypnodisc onto the pit release? What a fight back. Oh, Hypnodisc is on the verge of going down. What an upset. Bigger Brother have beaten Hypnodisc. Look again! Himno just go out! You've done it! You've won it! What a stunner! It doesn't get more sensational than that! Seems on the back foot race. Where are they? They 
come and grapple Tornado's extended frame. That frame necessary to support that mighty horizontal spinning disc. Razor has stopped the disc. The disc starts flying again. Razor has that extra front claw bit to the beak to try and stop the spinning disc. But for me, Razor's extra weaponry seems to be bent and buckled. And is it flapping in the wind? It grapples with Tornado again. What a final for Robot Wars the Sick Wars. Intrigue, mystery, suspense. Razor trying to grab hold. Ref Bob, get out of there if I was you. Shunt involved as well. It's all going off in the arena, I can tell you. Tornado's blade has been silenced and stopped there, but it's pushing into Razor. Razor bows its beak forward, but it can't get to the very heart of Tornado because Tornado has protected itself for that framework. Look at this. Forget the Tornado spinning blade. We didn't see this happening. The framework has stopped Razor's attackability. Brilliant from the Tornado team. Can Razor respond? Do you know, I think that little hook thing on the edge of the beak is to try and get a Tornado and lift up the framework. But Razor aren't going to get a chance, are they? Because Tornado slams and bangs. In comes Tornado again. Is this the end of an era? Is this the end of the Razor reign as champions of the UK? They are being smashed into submission. They cannot get away from the... Arena Cyborgs and the Red Bull comes in, and all of a sudden, the clock takes on a lurid and awful hue if you are a fan of Razor. Tornado, systematic in its pressure, in its desire, and in its drive. Finally, Razor is released. There, do you see the little hook? I think it was meant, intended to get in underneath that framework. But Razor's game plan has not worked, and Tornado's has. Right from the start of the series, they boasted of the interchangeable weaponry. We've seen a pusher. We've seen the little spinning disc. We've seen a front wrap. And now we've seen the mighty spinning blade. And Tornado is finally pushed back by Razor, but is it too little? Is it too late? What a final this is! What heart Razor has! The sparks of dead metal fly onto the wings of Razor. Can they lift themselves and yet turn this battle around? They're trying to claw Tornado, trying to gain some purchase, but Tornado with that four-wheel drive, again, driving them back into the CPZ, pushing them into shunt as it comes down. Razor and Ian Lewis know they've got a real fight now to retain their crown. Shunt lifted. Razor bashes down. They simply can't get a tornado's machinery. They can't get at the exposed tires with the beak. Mini Blood looks concerned. Razor now trying to build up momentum for another attack. How can they get beyond that latticework frame? They can't get into the heart of the matter. They can't get into the eye of the storm that is Tornado. Razor trying to force its way back into the final. You heard the pit release button being activated. Finally, Razor has lifted Tornado. Can they take them to the arena sidewall and push them out? It must be their only hope this late on. Tornado's weight, a huge factor here. Oh, that they can't get them down the pit. Look at that, it's an anti-pit device as well, an APD. We have never seen one before. We've heard about them, we have never seen an APD until now. And there it is. It goes to the judges, what innovation and what drama.